Welcome to episode 22 of Neopian Lore. Today, we're talking about, ugh, me pits. Just the name could elicit fear into even the brain tree or esophagus, not to mention their wide, beady, unblinking eyes that stare into the void of nothing. Are they of Neopia? An experiment gone wrong? Did they come from our world? I'll try to be as accurate as possible and attempt to pronounce all names correctly, but keep in mind, though this world is fictional, I'm sad to say this episode isn't for fun. It is for educational purposes, to try and crack the mystery of the Mee Pit. I'm your host, Krista Poyman. Now we shall try to cozy up to some nostalgia. It's a long-held belief among Neopians that Mee Pits are a to Neopian society. While some claim this is and that simple pet pets could never achieve global. We'd like to inform everyone that. We're sorry, but this Neopedia and the information we have attempted to reveal has now been classified. It is highly recommended that you leave. Quickly. Ominous, isn't it? What is it they don't want us to know? Nick Neopia, the one person trying to uncover Neopia's conspiracies, wouldn't even touch the topic of me pits during the skeptic tank. No theories, no sticky notes that even hinted about what the me pits are truly up to. But I yearn to uncover the truth, and I risk my life to do so. I typically try to argue the case of characters being misunderstood, but with me pits, I don't think I can. There's something truly sinister there. Let's start with the oldest known Mii Pits, which are from NeoQuest 1, the point-and-click adventure game that takes place a thousand years ago, during Neopia's medieval era. Instead of being called Mii Pits, though, they were known as pygmies, who resided in the jungle runes. There were shamans, greater shamans, chiefs, warriors, sages, elders, and skeletal shamans. It was a very complicated social hierarchy. But even though they were known as pygmies, they are undeniably Meepit's ancestors. The one noticeable difference is how their eyes are smaller, less soul-piercing. Perhaps with a thousand years to evolve, their eyes change to be bigger due to them causing mayhem above ground as opposed to below. If fish from our world have evolved to lose their eyes when they live in caves, Perhaps the opposite can be true for creatures who change their behavior to live primarily on the surface instead of caves. Why are Meepit's eyes so big? Could be to hypnotize their victims, or to see into the future. Did they somehow look into Neopias and were terrified of what they saw? The original Meepit's leader was named Kreia, who was giant and able to speak. When one goes to defeat him, these are Kreia's last words. Kreia falls to the ground, gasping for breath. I cannot, cannot be defeated. He coughs and looks up at you. I, I suppose we were foolish to think we could live forever here. But the others, the others will not be so easily overcome. Gors knows you are here. With that, he slumps to the ground and is silent. If adventurers carry on within the ruins, they would find this Gors the Mighty, who was an even bigger, mutant Mii Pit, proficient in healing. When brought down, you see the following. Gors the Mighty swings madly at you with his staff, but at last falls to the ground. He struggles to his feet. I am impressed, Gors says. None have ever bested me in combat before. Though it pains me to admit it, you are a better fighter than I. With that, Gors stumbles off into the darkness. There could have been a grudge formed as users did go and invade the Meepit's home, kill one of their leaders, and steal a bunch of items for personal gain. Who knows if this colony of original Meepit still exists? Maybe they remain underground. 
plotting, waiting, or perhaps they all surfaced and are now the chaotic Meepits we know today. I feel Meepits' closest real-life counterparts are naked mole rats. To preface, there has been some discourse whether Meepits are furred or naked. Yes, I will agree they have bushy tails like bunnies, but I don't think they have hair on the rest of their bodies. Doesn't it make them more creepy cute? Just like Meepits, naked mole rats live in large colonies, typically around 80 individuals, but can span as large as 300. They have a hierarchy which consists of workers, soldiers, and a queen, similar to honeybees and ants. They can move, their front and sides are separate from each other, like how our legs move independently, which would make even the tooth fairy gasp. Naked mole rats can live up to 37 years, which is fairly old for a rodent, and surprisingly have extremely low cancer rates, which scientists have been studying to hopefully make some breakthroughs in cancer research. It's a common misconception that naked mole rats are blind. They just have small eyes and typically close them when tunneling. But what if, what if they tunneled a little too deep, found a portal to another world? To Neopia? TNT has a strange relationship with the Meepits, as they work together in some capacity. Sometimes it seems like a mutual relationship, or that they have control over these meddlers, evidence from their editorial responses. For example, We gave some little aprons to a handful of Meepits and assigned them the task to help bake more cookies. Our team is working, with the Meepits, to get those last perks out for you guys. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. Since you were nice enough to bring the cake, I'll have those darn Meepits take another look and get that fixed as soon as possible for you guys. Seems pretty innocuous, but then, when anything is broken or missing, it always seems to be attributed to the Meepits. For instance, I really think there are some Meepits out there meticulously unplugging wires in an obscure basement at HQ that even we don't know about. It seems a mischievous Meepit was playing a practical joke with item descriptions, resulting in thousands of Neopians incorrectly applying magic goop to their pet's feet instead of their head. Silly Meepits must have been running amok again, but we'll see if we can get these two sources on the same page. Are the Meepits truly to blame or an easy scapegoat? Then we have some truly ominous quotes. When did Meepits learn to submit questions to the Edda? <gasps> we mean, you command, we obey, must bring more mustaches to masters! Or what about this one? We were punished severely by our Meepit overlords for this infraction, but you guys are worth it. And what about this? Day 3231 of our capture. Once again, we began our morning listening to the slow drip of the coffee maker. We gathered around it bleary-eyed until forced back to our desks by the Meepits. Once the chains were secure around our ankles, we read through the demands that had been emailed to us during our precious sleeping hours. The Meepit overlords cracked their whips, and the artists began drawing. The programmers began tapping away, writing their fancy code. The writers started writing, and Dragona curled up around the water cooler, growling at those who passed near. All in all, it was just another day in the office. Something definitely weird is going on here. From these quotes, I would say it's clear who was really in control. One brave Neopian dancing underscore queen 88 dared to ask how are the meepits doing and the meepits they answered we are doing fine thanks for asking we appreciate it and your end will come quick and mercifully when the time comes to um we mean meep that sounds a lot like world domination but when i think of world domination the first person thing being that comes to mind is Dr. Frank Sloth. He arrived at the start of Neopia 2,000 years ago. Timeline-wise, he could be the Meepit's creator, though they don't seem like a likely candidate to be a sloth experiment. Meepits are clearly mammals since they have hair, at least on their tails, and none of Sloth's other experiments do. And I can't find any images of them together, 
So they are either scared of one another, or Dr. Sloth is secretly ten meepits in a trench coat. If they are afraid of one another, who do you think would be afraid of who? I'm betting on Sloth afraid of the meepits. Oh, it could spell disaster if they one day teamed up. Neopia wouldn't be able to fight such a dastardly duo. Back in 2012, there was an unusual machine that fell from the space station and landed in the haunted woods. Where this machine came from, who's to say? But the Meepits were quick to outfit it for global domination. They even created a chamber to zap a poor Fee Pit to power the darn thing. This was a Neocache mini-event called Secret Meepit Stash, where users could purchase blueprints to exchange for wearables. So let me get this straight. The Neopian community was helping the Meepits plan for world domination in exchange for... clothing? Really, guys? Really? Man, the length people will go for fashion! Sheesh! The blueprints were all picture-based, and I'm gonna try to make sense of one of them to show you how ridiculous they were. So, for blueprint D7M, we have what looks to be a dark fairy plus a pot. The cooking pot or soup fairy's pot, maybe Chef Bonjou's pot, Sophie the Swamp Witch's cauldron? Huh. There are quite a few famous pots in Neopia. Anyways, from that, we have an arrow that leads to a potion. Okay, so maybe the Mee Pits need to employ a dark fairy to create some sort of concoction using magic from another being. So then the potion has an arrow to what looks to be a jail cell. So perhaps the potion incapacitates somehow. And then finally, we have an equal sign to the Neopian globe with a meat pit standing on it wearing a crown and holding a scepter. Clearly the symbol for world domination. Uh, feels like we're missing a lot of steps in context here. Another blueprint started with crayons, question mark, plus fire becomes a cloud, which becomes a rainbow, which then becomes a tic-tac-toe board that equals world domination. I... I got nothing for that one. The Mee Pits must think on a higher plane of intelligence that I don't understand. Clearly, none of these plans ended up working out for them, as Neopia is currently safe. The game no longer exists on the site, so whatever happened to the machine remains a mystery. It could have been destroyed or brought underground. We just don't know. After so many years of plotting... How come none of their world domination plans have panned out? Not even getting as far as a battle event or a mini plot. Could there be some disorganization behind the scenes we don't know about? Or is it a really, really, really long con? If, for whatever maniacal reason, you want to own your own Mee Pit, they are restocked in the haunted woods at the shop Spooky Pet Pets. Of course it would be the haunted woods. A Mee Pit will greet you at the storefront made from an old, decrepit tree, and the store owner, a Halloween Psy Bunny, even has a Mee Pit burrowed in their hair. Halloween Psy Bunnies do look like vampires, so maybe through their hypnosis, they can keep the little critters in line. There is also the item Jar of Mee Pit Eyes, which is exactly as it sounds. Someone must have made that item, and the vampire Cybunny shopkeeper looks awfully suspicious. Mee Pits have a rarity of 98, so they stock pretty infrequently. Where the shopkeeper gets a steady supply is beyond me. Okay, they could have some sort of agreement to be sold as quote-unquote pet pets to spread their evilness to all corners of Neopia. There are currently 32 Mee Pit colors, 27 of which can be painted of the Pet Pet Puddle, and 5 are exclusive Labray colors. If you poke around the rest of the haunted woods, you'll see ghost Mee Pits bouncing around, likely the same ones that appeared in the Tale of Woe plot, who were integral pieces to solve a puzzle. Their price? Of course, juice. Everyone knows they love their juice. Though Mee Pits may be unpredictable creatures, you can always count they can be swayed with a sugary beverage. Apparently, it's also canon that ghost Mee Pits really love to dance together while holding hands, even going as far as having their own dance album, which is so cute. There's not much to do as a ghost, so I'm glad they found a hobby. April 26, 2007 was a very terrible, terrible day. 
for the news was replaced with an image of, quote, the giant Meepit of peace, not doom, which is totally false. They were the Meepit of doom, which you will understand in just a minute. The words underneath were, you are not prepared. And they were right. We were not prepared for what was to follow was Neopets 2.0, the introduction of pet customization. And with pet customization came the dreaded conversion. I will still not forgive TNT for what they did to poor Exquitox, Kikos, and Blue Maroos. You did them dirty and you know it. Which, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. They just announced the unconverted paintbrush will be released this December. So much hype! Eek! Meepits do appear in a few games, such as Snowball Fight and Barf Boat, but they have star billing for two games, Meepit Juice Break and Meepit vs. Feepit. The first thing to know about Meepit Juice Break is the theme song is an absolute bop. The electric guitar goes hard. Just listen to these riffs. The game is pretty straightforward. Different colored Meepits are chillin' in a tree, which the description describes them as lost Meepits, and they are demanding Juppy Juice. The player must control the Juice-O-Matic, a machine with a series of tubes that lead to the Meepits. But oh no! The pipes are broken! So you have to rotate them so they lead to the thirsty Pet Pets. The options for Juice are red, yellow, and blue, and if you match the juice color with the Meepit color, you get bonus points. Some you have to mix colors, which can be trickier to find the correct series of pipes. And if you ever get a pink Meepit and are wondering how the heck a doodle to make pink with red, yellow, and blue, it's a mix of all three. Don't question it. It somehow makes sense. If a Meepit is not fed within a certain amount of time, you lose a life. Lose three lives and it's game over. Typing Juice-O-Matic will reset all the Meepits timers, and typing Meepits will get you an extra life. Both can only be used once per game. There's also a secret appearance from TNT member Oliver, who made many of the original Flash games like Coconut Shy along with this one, that you can find by clicking on the eye of the green Meepit at the top of the title screen. This game does award an avatar if you submit 3,500 points called a Meepit Run! though I am thoroughly convinced this avatar is impossible to get. So, juppies are a native fruit to Mystery Island. Meepit's obsession with juppy juice makes me worried we may have another invasive species on our hand like the hazies with Mystery Island's donut fruit. I'm assuming Meepit's are native to Meridel because of their appearance in NeoQuest 1, but then they're sold in the haunted woods, but also appear in Mystery Island, so... Does Neopets have an exotic pet pet trade? Are Meepits native to all of these places? Different species of Meepits? Oh, I'm now worried about the ecology of this world. It's all pixels. It's all pixels. Just breathe, Krista. Though we should probably stockpile Juppy Juice in case they are forming a Meepit army. It could be the bargaining chip we need. Their other famous game is Mee Pit vs. Fee Pit, where the two title pet pets battle it out. There are five different Mee Pit challengers that increase in difficulty. Blue, Dung, Fairy, Tyranian, and lastly, Fire. Oh, I just love how tiny the wings are on the Fairy Mee Pit. Oh my gosh. The player controls the Fee Pit using the arrow keys to move and ZXC keys to punch, kick, and block. Combo moves rack up the most points. Pro tip, if the Mee Pit is blocking and you go to hit, it will take damage but you won't actually earn any points, which especially matters if you're going for the avatar Mee Pit vs. Fee Pit, which is awarded with a score of 3,000 points or more. There's also two-player mode, which you can play on the same keyboard. So go rope your mom, significant other, dog, or your kooky next-door neighbor to play this fun little game. My question is, where is the Pet Pet Protection League during all of this? We've got pet pets just going at it, and the fee pit is shaking like a leaf. I don't think they consented to this, and we all know that me pits play dirty. And why fee pits? Their description is literally 
so named for the sound they make as they call to each other over the snowy landscape. Is it because they are so innocent and friendly that Meepits want to fight them? Seems like they're fighting their innocent counterpart. Feepits, Meepits, even their names are similar. And Feepits are traditionally blue, Meepits pink. Almost angel-devil colors here. When the Meepits lose, they have the audacity to bawl their eyes out, trying to make us feel bad for defeating them. Your emotional manipulation will not work. Don't try to spin it like the Fee Pits are secretly the bad guys. There is no way. We all know you wanted to start the fight. There are two disturbing items that can be created using Mee Pits at the cooking pot. There's the fishing Mee Pit statue, combining one with the fishing Kiko gnome. There we have a Mee Pit frozen in time, forever doomed to hold a fishing pole. Or perhaps it's faking it, plotting on your front lawn. And then we have the abomination of Romeep 3T3. This is where we have a Meepit's head attached to a robot body, created by mixing a Meepit with a Roberg 3T3. Jawita, your cooking pot concerns me sometimes. After going through all of this insanity, you probably want to head home, take a shower, drink a cup of tea, but maybe you've lost it a little. Your friends and family are starting to notice how erratic you've been acting trying to solve the mystery of the Mee Pits. <sighs> Luckily, the Mee Pits Oak Sanatorium for the Psychologically Fragile is currently in ruins after the Tale of Woe plot. Yes, you heard that right. The Mee Pits Oak Sanatorium. This is, or was, an asylum near Neovia in the Haunted Woods. It was abandoned many years ago after the prisoners revolted and escaped. Who knows what it was like, as their doors were very much locked tight. Did Meepits hypnotize and torture poor souls who were trapped there? Their squeaks the only thing heard in the pitch of night? If you care to investigate the abandoned asylum, be my guest. But rumors say it's infested with zombies of the former inmates and workers, likely tortured by the maniacal beings which are Meepits. Or we could be wrongfully judging them. A few bad apples doesn't mean the whole orchard is bad. Wait, what's this? Where did this letter come from? Huh, it has classified written on it. Let me open it real quick. It's signed anonymous. Wait a second. Oh my gosh, this explains everything. All of our questions answered. Meepits are... <laughs> <laughs> this is your Mee Pit Overlord speaking. That is all for this episode of Neopian Lore. All characters and licensing belong to Neopets.com. Music was created by that pathetic human Krista. Today's composition is called World Domination. We hope you have a terrifying day in Neopia.